talk kingdom. He's the one you can lean on. He don't change, he stays the same. Won't find a better reason. No. So come tap in, tap in, just listen. And bring a friend, let's spread this vision. Oh. Let's talk kingdom. He's the one you can lean on. He don't change, he stays the same. Won't find a better reason. No. So come tap in, tap in, just listen. And bring a friend, let's spread this vision. Oh. And shalom to every one of you around the world. We are so glad to have you with us on this wonderful and dynamic day of Yam Habikuram. This is the day of the first fruits that Yahweh has given unto us as a time of the season, the spring season called Pesach. Those of you who would be used to us viewing in on your <laughs> proceeding word program, uh, Yahweh's feasts trump it all. Uh, we will be, in fact, in full garb. Uh, as those of you viewing on the YouTube and on our Facebook channels are, this will be a one-time view. It will be immediately removed once this programming is complete as to not offend any of the belief systems that are there when they come to view uh, our systems. Uh, we're not worrying about apologizing or the apologetics of it, but we do believe that there is a symptom that needs to be always eradicated so that a problem does not exist. Well, again, to you, we speak Shalom Aleichem. And in this, we speak to you the power of Elohim's word over your life. The times have, as always been, what Yahweh would for us to do. The end of Yam Bikurim, Yam Ha Bikurim, has been for some of you in certain time zones. And we are still in the East Coast, in the day of Yam Habikuram. This will be a very quick and a very short programming, but it will be the conclusion of all things that we have encountered and have led up to to this point. Uh, for those of you who know and can get the UK in the room, those of you who know and can get your South Africans who may be and or those who know Vietnam may be very well asleep right now, um, <laughs> They may be, maybe they might be awake, but they may be asleep. Uh, but if you can, you might want to ping them in or share this with them on this day. The reasons for this is because of the protocols that Yahweh put in place, and we want to make sure that we implement them in rightness. Let us bow our heads in reverence of Yahweh. Elohim, we come before you as you have sanctioned. This is the day, Yahweh, you have made. You created this time of feast. You created this time of honor. You created this time of communion to be with you. We're asking you now, as we have taken time from work, we've taken time off school, we've taken time from our world to come and sit in your word in this season and in this space. We pray, Yahweh, your words continue to encourage and impact our lives for the empowerments that we need to operate effectively in this earthen realm. Your kingdom come. So we pray, Yahweh, which art in Shamaim, Kodesh, and Baruch Hashem Adonai, Baruch Hashem, Yahweh. Baruch Hashem, Ruach HaKadosh. Baruch Hashem, Elohim. El Elohe Israel. Thy kingdom come. Mm. Malek. Thy will, Torah, be done. In these earthen vessels, the Adoma, the 
descendants of Adam. Your will, your Torah be done in us as you've written it in our minds and in our hearts. We desire it to be done as you desire it and have it done in heaven. Because of this day, you've promised to give us in this day our daily bread. We come before you earnestly and honestly and humbly asking you to forgive us of all of our trespasses. The season of Pesach is the epitome of your forgiveness, your cleansing, your makadeshkam, your sidkanu, your uzai, and your shalom. Forgive us as we confess our sin, our wrong, and we cleave to the blood that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. As we consume the unleavened bread as you've prescribed, typifying and paralleling it that it would be something we remove all pride and what symbolizes commets from our life, leaven, self-rising, puffed up itness, pride, arrogance, conceit, narcissism, hypocrisy. Forgive us of our trespasses as we contemplate that. As we now desire to forgive those who have in fact trespassed against us. And now by this new way of life, this new diet in life, lead us no longer as we've led ourselves into sin. Lead us not into temptation. Your word we allow to lead us. Your word will never lead us into temptation. So by your word, lead us not into temptation. But by your word, deliver us from the evil we've gotten ourselves into. For thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. And thine Elohim is the glory forever and ever. We have come into this day. We have come into this house to worship you, to obey you, to honor you. These things we ask of you here our effort to acknowledge by faith your commandments, which are the creative power of you in the earth. And we will forever give you glory. We will forever give you dominion. We forever give you the honor that exudes from this moment in transaction. We might not feel anything physically at this moment based on our phases and our experiences and our years into this lifestyle, but we know without a doubt, we shall surely come again rejoicing. Many of us have sown in tears, bearing precious seed, but doubtless we shall come again to this place rejoicing. For Yahweh, you have done great things for us and in us. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Yahweh has done great things. Yahweh has done great things. 
Yahweh, you have done great things. I bless Yah's holy name. And I will bless Yahweh, oh, my soul, oh, and all that is within me will bless Yah's holy, holy name will bless Yah's holy name bless Adonai's holy in name bless Ruach Akadesh holy in name Baruch Hashem Elohim Chodesh Elohim, Chodesh Elohim, Chodesh Elohim, Elohim. El Eloye Israel, El Eloye Avram Mitzach Yachav. We bless you, exalt you, and extol you. Because of Yahushua Hamashiach and the Pesach and the Yam Habichurim, Rashitz. We are Israel by faith. We are heirs of the exact same promises of Avraham by the shed blood, the professed feasts, the proclaimed days of you, and the willing of our own volition to embrace the blood and sacrifice on the day of Pesach. Except a man believes Yahweh raised Yahshua from the dead, believing it in one's heart and confessing it with one's mouth, one cannot be saved. So today we profess, we proclaim Pesach. We proclaim Yeshua HaMashiach. And we embrace the cleansing of his blood. Though our sins were as scarlet, your blood has made us whiter than snow. This day, we honor you. Thank you, Yahweh. We know very well who you are. It is no longer an issue of religion for us. This is our lifestyle in your kingdom. Your kingdom come. And we ask now for your will to be done. We gather in your Moedim to express 
and embrace your governance of your kingdom. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we have access to you. For there, through the Lord of glory, who you've placed for us as a door to you, as the way to you, as the light of you and the life in you, we now have access to your glory. In glory, you supply all our need. We are here because you've assembled us. We've blown the shofar. We've rendered ourselves available. We've not done our own thing. We've not spoken our own words. We've assembled at your Chodesh Mekra. We have read and read your Torah all the day long. Blessed is that man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of the sinners. nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But our delight is in the Torah of you, Yahweh. And in your Torah this day, these days, we have meditated day and night. You have promised that we would be like tree planted by the rivers of waters that will bring forth this fruit in your seasons. And our leaves shall not wither and whatsoever Yahweh we do moving forward shall prosper. And we know now by truth, the ungodly are not so, but they are like the shaft which the wind drives away. Therefore, Yahweh, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For Yahweh knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. We stand here righteously in you, not self-proclaimed, but by humility and compliance to your instructions. We pray now your glory in the earth. Leviticus chapter number 23 indicates in verse number 10, according to the instructions, we'll say verse nine, Yahweh spake unto Moshe saying, speak unto the children of Israel I am Israel by faith. You need to make that your proclamation, make that your decree now. Say, I am Israel by faith of Yahweh. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, when you come into the land which I have given you, When you come into the jobs that I've allowed you to have, when you come into the businesses I've given you witty inventions to create and to devise, and you shall reap the harvest thereof, then you shall bring a sheaf, an omer, of the first fruits of that particular harvest. You shall bring that unto the priest and the priest shall wave the sheaf before Yahweh to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Shabbat of the first day of Hachat Matzat. That's when the priest, the Kohenim, the officiator, the acting officer shall wave it before Yahweh. Most of you now have offered your offering. You have rendered your lamb. You have rendered your fine flour. You have rendered your fine oil. You have rendered your fine wine. 
Most of you, we have them sitting now in registry. We have them now sitting in literally our receipts because of the technology we use today. We do not have to be together in one space to collect an offering as Christendom had taught you for years. And the way that things had to be based on the nature of technology. But now technology has given you the advance that you can electronically make your contributions. And we have printed down all of those who have reported through the different various apps that you have and through the different website that we have rendered you to bring your offering for the wave and your sheaf offering for the wave offering here, your names, those who have pledged it and made an earnest effort and those who have rendered it in full. Only the names of those who've rendered the offering or its vowel have been admitted and submitted, I should say, into the wave. Just because you're a citizen of this kingdom post, if you have not complied, I cannot lie before the father and say, and do you are accepted or it has been accepted because we've not received it. Verse 11 says, and the sheaf offering shall be weighed before Yahweh to be accepted for you. So we hold now in earnest what Yahweh has required in this day. We've placed our entire reports in our offering vessel. Do we have them all? Son, is this all of them, son? Bring those, please. Thank you. We are just about done. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. At this time, beloved, we will do the sheaf and the wave offering as instructed by the writ of Yahweh our Elohim. And we trust that you all will understand that this is a serious issue. And there are specifics that Yahweh has required to this offering. As I prepare to pray for this particular offering, may Yahweh be with you and may his blessings fall upon you. Prepare your hearts for prayer, please. Yahweh, we thank you for this offering. We thank you for the ability to offer before you. We ask you now that as we comply with your instructions, those who have willingly done it, even those who have done it out of begrudging, we now pray you that what we have rendered to this storehouse is registered in your heavens and the spirit realm for the things you have promised spiritually to your people that will cause a natural manifestation in the variety of their aspects of life that we live. So Father, we wave this to the east and we wave to the west. We wave now to the south and Father, we wave to the north on acceptance for every name and closed upon this article for this ministry, we know that they are and have been accepted in their offerings and we yield them and render them to you for your glory, for your instructions of the writ as to what happens to these things. We now ask you to find them as present and as acceptable in your sight by your commandment to wave this before you. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, who gives us access because he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life, he is the door to you. We accept your governance for bringing your kingdom into a manifested state in the earth. And in the precious name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we honor you. Now, Father, Again,
turn our captivity as the streams in the south. They that have sown in tears shall reap in joy. He that goes forth weepeth, yet bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with them. We pray now, every business, every employment stream, every income stream represented by the giving and this offering. Yahweh, you sit now as Lord of our harvest. We trust you alone with what you have given unto us. We will work it as you give us the power and the understanding and the wit and the will, but it belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, Yahweh. All the glory belongs to you, Elohim. Thank you for making these income streams now in your care voluminous. Fill these streams with your provisions, with your provender for your obedient servants. Cause this as you've promised to be an issue of perpetuity. And as we continue in this current of yours, create now current C that we are able to no longer be beneath, but above, no longer to be tails, but the head, to no longer be borrowers, but lender, and to be lenders to nations because of your anointing on our income streams. In the mighty name of Yahushua Hamashiach, we pray in obedience to you. By faith, this thing. And Yahweh, we thank you for the opportunity to serve you. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray and we say, Amen. Everyone at this moment, wherever you are, lift your hands and worship to him and give him the high praise. Yahweh. Give him thanks. Thank you, Yahweh, for your promises that we know you keep. We bless you and we exalt you. And the seed that we have now sown into this land and into this ground, we place the prayer of you upon it. The Bible declares that when Yeshua was given over, there was a resurrection blessing that we all should understand and embrace. The reason you want to pray the resurrection blessing is because you've now sown seed that needs to be resurrected in a multiplicity from its singularity in which it was literally rendered. Blessed be Elohim, Yahweh of our Mashiach, Yeshua, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope because of the resurrection of Yeshua HaMashiach from the dead. Father, our end sample lives, though he became a seed, now the harvest of his seed is evidenced in us. And though this is true in the spiritual, it is also true in the natural. Though this is true based on our faith, it is also true in our relationships in the earth. Though it is true in our ministries, it is also true in our finances in the earth. Though it is true in the heavens, it is also true in our health in the earth. So this one seed of obedience triggers 13 blessings of shalom. Thank you, Yahweh, for your prosperity plan. In the mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we pray and we say, Amen.
ini. To Elohim be glory and honor, dominion, might, and power, both now and literally forever. You're still in Pesach. It's a good time to proclaim Pesach. Come on, you can do it. I still proclaim Pesach. Yam Habekurim. Alleluia. You're still in Pesach. You'll be here until next Tuesday, the 11th at sundown, for the last event of Haghat Matzat, which concludes the feast season of Pesach. Starting now to realize that we have been freed and given access to begin a new life and a governance and an edict to begin a new life in him, as is symbolized in this memorializing per his prescription. Your life has changed. Here is how we know this to be true. Psalms 133. The Bible declares, and though we thought we knew it, it speaks about these gatherings. And here's what it says. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. This type of unity and dwelling together and communion, it's like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, meaning the Gadah that saying that went down upon the skirts of his garments, meaning the congregation of Israel. Again, make the statement now, make the statement now, say it out of your mouth, you live in a voice activated kingdom, type it through your fingers. I am Israel by faith. Verse two again, while you make that declare, it is like the precious ointment that is upon the head that ran upon the beard even the Gadah Choinim, Aaron's beard, that went down into the skirts of his garments. We are the skirts, the congregation of the saints, Yisrael, and that by faith. As the dew of Hermon, the mountain, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there in that unity, there in that harmony, there in that communion, here in this unity. Yahweh now commands the blessing, the blessings in the natural, the blessings over the business you just made him Lord of the harvest on, the blessings over the job and pay system that you are part of that makes sure your job will forever be provided for, that your income will have its need met. That's what you did in first fruits. You didn't just give your money to something. You allowed for Yahweh to know, whatever you've given me, I give you back what you require so that you can continue to provide for me as you have stated. Yahweh commands the blessing now on that you've trusted him with. And now, he also commands everlasting life. Those are two separate blessings. But they are all predicated on your compliance to his prescription. And make no bones about it. Yahweh's prescription is the Torah. Yahweh's prescription is not every message you can finagle from the Bible, but the Bible contains the Torah. The prescription is his governance for his kingdom. My job is complete. We have prayed the prayer of resurrection. We have prayed the prayer of the blessing of Yam HaBikurim. Your seed is now planted in. 
Listen, Pesach is now the ground open to receive your seed. Let me refresh you of another promise. Because of your compliance in Hag Hat Matzat, in Yam Ha Bikurim, Yahweh makes a promise and he makes it very clear. Yoel chapter 2, verse 11. I'm sorry, verse 13, 12. Therefore also now says Yahweh, turn unto me even with your hearts, all of your heart, and with fasting, honoring him, and with weeping, and with mourning. Verse 13, rend your heart, not your garments, and turn unto Yahweh your Elohim, for he is gracious, he is merciful, he is slow to anger, and he is of great kindness, and it repents him of the evil. Who knows if when you return to him, he will repent and leave a blessing behind him for you, even the meat offering that's required, even the drink offering that is required for you to give unto Yahweh your Elohim. Hmm. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Verse 16, gather the people. Verse 17, let the priests minister unto Yahweh. Verse 18, then will Yahweh be jealous for his land and pity you and I, his people. Yea, Yahweh will answer and say unto his people, behold, I will send you corn. Somebody say, I receive it. I will send you wine. Someone say, I receive it. I will send you oil. Somebody say, I receive it. And you will be satisfied therewith. Somebody say, thank you, Yahweh. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Hallelujah. I will remove far off from you the northern army. I will drive him into a land that is barren and desolate, his face toward the east sea and his hinder part unto the utmost sea. And his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. Verse 21. Fear not, O land, be glad, rejoice, for Yahweh will do great things. Be not afraid, O beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness literally do spring. For the tree now bears her fruit, the fig tree now bears the vine, and they do yield their strength. Verse 23, be glad now, you children of Zion. Someone say, I am Israel by faith. And be restrengthened in Yahweh, who is your Elohim. For he gave you the former rain moderately to try you, to see what you would do with it. And now, because of your compliance and your obedience and rendering your heart, not your garments, Yahweh will cause to come down for you the rain. Somebody say, thank you, Yahweh. He will then cause to come down for you the former rain, the rain that you gave late, he gave you earlier that you squandered. He's going to even reform and reproduce that for you. He also then says he's going to bring down and cause to come down for you the latter rain. And guess when he said he's going to do that? In the first month. You are in the first month. Why do you think he causes the rain to come down in the first month? Because this is the month of Pesach, where you sow your seed of first fruits. Your seed needs rain. And because of your obedience in Sukkah and coupled by your obedience in Pesach, Yam Had Bikurim, You've planted this seed. 50 days from today, we will be seeing a harvest spiritually of your spiritual compliance today. Though attached to a physical function, that physicality will also be blessed in multiplicities. You might not get back money. You may get back something far greater. 
than money. But Yahweh's promise is that I'm going to put rain on the seed you've just sown. I need somebody to say, rain on us, Yahweh. Come on, make it up your mouth. Rain on us, Yahweh. Come on, say, I rain on us, Yahweh. This is his promise. This is his literal fix of our issues. So verse 23, so you read it in context. Be glad, you children of Zion. Rejoice in Yahweh, your Elohim, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down on you for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. I proclaim Pesach. And the floors shall be full of wheat, Yahweh be praised. And your vats are going to overflow with wine and oil. Verse 25, and I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you because you disobeyed me. But now that you've returned unto me with your whole heart and your compliance to my prescriptions and not rending your garments, but you have rent your heart, I have left an offering behind so you are not empty handed when you honor my prescriptions. Now, verse 26 says, you shall eat in plenty. You shall be satisfied. And you will learn to praise the name of Yahweh, your Elohim, because he hath dealt wondrously with you and my people. Hallelujah. My people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of of Israel, and that I am Yahweh, your Elohim, and no one else. And again, my people will never be ashamed. Somebody needs to cry out. One, I proclaim Pesach. Two, I am Israel by faith. Three, I have complied. Four, I wait for your reign, Yahweh. My job is done here. I pray that you have had opportunity to learn and glean from the season that you are in, that Yahweh can bring and do in your life all that he has always desired and craved to do. Remember, this is a true season. Many people, because of religion, think that what you are doing is some crazy hocus pocus spiritualistic stuff and is not necessary. It is not in the word. It is not what Jesus did. I assure you, Yeshua not only brought the Hag Bikurim, he became it. And he wants us to perpetuate it until he comes because we'll be doing it still then a thousand years after he comes. But if you don't understand that, this to you and others you may think to share it with is occultic, is crazy. But you read it in the writ and we're not using commentary. Let's talk kingdom. Well, we conclude now the service of Yam Habikurim. But before we do, there may be some who have listened and said, oh, my goodness, I have been listening to these teachings with you, Apostle, for all this time. And though I believe in it, I ain't quite sure about it. I don't know if it's God or not, but I do know you teaching good stuff. I mean, I ain't going to stop listening. Listening and no compliance doesn't hurt me. 
because I won't have him say woe unto me for not teaching his people. But when we know and we're listening and we're hearing and we find fear to comply for whatever we fear in the world, we hurt ourselves. I love you so much to tell you the truth, even when I get ridiculed for it, because I know it will bring you where Yahweh needs you to be. Because it's brought me where he needs me to be. Today, if now you understand through the writ that this is seriously what Yah's will is, I want you to rend your heart and say, Yahweh, I repent. I didn't believe it at first. I didn't see the need for it. I've been suckered by so many pastors and preachers and teachers trying to get money out of us and all this. I repent. I see your word now. And you're saying, well, my, my name wasn't in that wave. I know I didn't send it in. I know I'll still sit here in this church and act like I'm still a part of this fellowship but I didn't comply with it because I don't think it's necessary. I would ask you to please move on because we want to be in unity here where only Yahweh can command the blessings. And we can't be in unity if you don't find it necessary to comply. Come back when you do, or if you never find it necessary, keep moving. In this moment, many of you have texted me this morning and saying, Apostle, I, I, can I still get it in? Yes. You're not getting it to us. This is a ministry. We are 27 ministries deep. You're not giving money to a man, just like Israel didn't give money to a priest. They gave it to the function of the tabernacle. And though you see my face as the lead and the head of this, in many cases right here for this citizenship and this kingdom outpost, we oversee 27 ministries and the functions are for the kingdom of Elohim and the teachings you receive every day. I teach the most because I wanna make sure it's taught rightly. But hear this clearly, you have opportunity now to go back in and say, Yahweh, I repent and get your seed in. Follow the instructions at the bottom of the screen the seeds are very simple and it's very clear. Yahweh wants that lamb. He wanted a lamb for Pesach. He wanted a lamb for Hakat Matzah. But more importantly today, he wants a lamb, fine flour, fine oil, and fine wine for your businesses. That's how he provides your needs when you make him the Lord of your harvest. This action tells him, Yahweh, I make you Lord of my harvest. Your lamb, of course, is monetized out at 330 USD. And the other elements that are the three, oil, wine, and flour, are at 120. That brings you to a first fruits contribution of his request, his prescription of 450. Go now to vwjministries.com. If you're on Clubhouse and you're hearing this for the first time and you've really been convicted and something just happened in your life, open up the profile, go to the bottom, hit the link to the ministry. And when we get that, I promise you, before sundown this day, I will wave them before Yahweh on your behalf. Go. I'll wait and have my great assistant here. Uh, make sure we find those names. When they ping and they come across, your name will be registered. Your name will be taken. I will redress. I will not rebroadcast. And I promise you, in this holy, consecrated time I am in right now, before sundown, EST, this day, I will make sure to waive your offering and I'll still do it one more time in the West Coast, 10 p.m. EST. I will waive again those offerings. Don't let this opportunity for real life change to miss you. No plea, no beg, no praise-a-thon. We don't do that. We live this. And we live it as a unit.
But please, if you are a citizen of this ministry of DKM Ministries or VWJ Ministries, and you have not complied with this, you are not a citizen. Because a citizen complies with the rules and the instructions. And you may find that abrasive, but this is a time where we set order in the house of Elohim. And in this citizenship, we need that unity. Because if we're not unified, can we affect Yahweh commanding the blessing on us? Oh, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. For there, Yahweh commands the blessing, even life evermore. Today, if you can't, you say, well, I, I'm convicted, I get it, but I ain't gonna, I, I, I'm not ready, I didn't budget, fine. Make your best offer to Yahweh himself and then tell Yahweh within 30 days, I will have this completed. Make your vow to him, that's biblical. And the only reason you get to make the vow is because you did not know or you were not convinced, but now somehow after seeing and understanding the writ that we put forth to this issue, you know this is Elohim and not just some stuff. Go now. I promise you when that name comes across the registry, I will make sure when they let me know that there is another name, I will collect them, put them back into the same wave envelope and bag that we have and the offering plate that we have, and we will render that again before Yahweh. I won't rebroadcast, but you have my word before Elohim that I will waive your offering. See, it's not about you making me something. It's the way Yahweh said he wants it done. If you could just wave it on your own, I'd say you go ahead and wave it yourself. But that's not what he says. He tells us very specifically and very clearly that we are to bring it to a place that he has set, he has sanctioned, and they will waive it for you on your behalf, to be accepted on your behalf. If you're having a problem in overseas, wherever you may be, and you can't get on our website, just contact us and we'll show you and help you to get that so your contributions can be made. But those of you who are citizens of this kingdom post, and if you're not, I still love you. I'm gonna always love you. And it's between you and Elohim. But when you start seeing elements in the ministry shifting and the reciprocation does not hit to you, remember it requires, no matter who you are, all of us to comply. And if we don't comply, then we don't partake. We have to partake, i.e., if I may paraphrase, in his sufferings. Then we can reign with him. This is an act of faith, not an act of braggadocious, not an act of display. This is an act of faith and compliance. My job is done. Let us remember to talk kingdom. Yahweh's instructions were again for the last time. When you come into the land, which I have given unto you to reap the harvest thereof, then you shall bring your sheaf of first fruits of your harvest unto the priest and the priest shall wave the omer before Yahweh that it may be accepted for you on the morrow after the Shabbat, the priest shall wave it. I hope this makes a lot more sense to us. And though we may have been dumbed down by Christendom and a lot of the different teachings within it, nothing wrong. We are still learning about Messiah, but in all you're getting, get understanding. If you've gotten understanding, please, I beg you. Not that I have need of anything, other than a need for you to have a better relationship with Elohim and better access to what he has in glory to get to you when you need it. Father, you know how my heart bleeds about this. I pray you help your people to see your light. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray and we say, Amen. Well, we'll see you guys. We're about to enter into Shabbat. 
uh, the seventh day Shabbat. We've been, y'all know y'all been three days of the Moedim. You should be rejoicing in him. It is a wonderful time and thing. And I want you to know that we're about to enter into our seventh day Shabbat. And we're going to have a wonderful, wonderful experience in him. There's going to be so much we're going to talk about in our Midrashas. I hope that you'll join us. I do expect to be at the 11 p.m. and as well as the 11 a.m. should Yahweh release me. So I want to make sure that you guys are excited. Think about what Yahweh is doing in your life. This goes beyond a moment of a church event. This is your lifestyle, people. See, let me say, thank you, Ruach. I'll say this last thing before I let you go. I won't say it. I'll read it to you. Can I read it to you? Let's take a chance to read it to you. Devarim 28 makes this statement. And it shall come to pass. We always like this, but you cannot. You, you can, let me tell you, let me say this clearly. Make no mistake about it. You cannot speak this over your life if you have not done its instructions. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of Yahweh your Elohim to observe and to do all of his commandments, which I command you this day, that Yahweh, Yahweh will set you on high above all nations of the earth. And then all these blessings shall come on thee to overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of Yahweh your Elohim. You will be blessed in the city and in the field. You will be blessed in the fruit of your body and your ground, the fruit of your cattle, your kind, your flocks, your sheep, your basket, your store. You will be blessed when you come into a place and when you go out of a place. You will be caused to make your enemies that rise up against you to be smitten before your face. They will come out against you one way and run from you seven different ways. Yahweh shall command the blessings, command the blessings, command the blessings upon you in your storehouses and in all that you set your hand unto. This pertains to Yam Habikuram. Your harvests are your storehouses where you take your harvest to. And what you put your hand on are what you're working for for your harvest. And all he shall bless you in your land which Yahweh has given unto you. Yahweh shall establish you a holy people. You don't have to try to make people think you're so saved. You don't have to make people think you're somebody great in the kingdom. Yahweh will establish you unto that. He has sworn this unto you if you will keep his commandments of Yahweh our Elohim and walk in his ways. And all the people shall see this and call you blessed. They will call you by the name of Yahweh and they shall be, they shall reverence and revere you. Yahweh shall make you plenteous in your goods, in the fruit of your body, the fruit of your cattle, the fruit of your ground, and in the land which Yahweh swear unto your fathers to give you. Yahweh then will open to you, listen, listen, Yahweh then will open to you. Yes, you should be excited, Dana. Yahweh then will open unto you his good treasure. Listen, the heaven to give rain unto your land in Yahweh's season. Somebody say rain on me. Come on, y'all got to get this. And he will cause you to be blessed of all the work of your hand and you shall lend to many nations and you shall not have to borrow. And Yahweh will make you the head and not the tail above and not beneath, if, if, if you hearken to the commandments. So that means you can observe them, but if you don't do them, there is a disconnect. If you hearken unto the commandments of Yahweh your Elohim, which I command you this day to observe them and to do them. If you will not go aside from any of these words, which I command you this day, to the right hand or to the left, or go after other gods to serve them. Zion, it's about compliance. It's not a show. It's a lifestyle. 
Father, we thank you for this day. Put your palms to the ceiling and receive this blessing. May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May Yahweh lift his countenance upon you and grant you all 13 attributes of his shalom. Bring your hands back and say, Yahweh, I receive it all in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Let's talk kingdom. He's the one.